Welcome to an exploration of sight and mind, a travel through the world of films and the artists that bring you these masterpieces. Do you love films, directors, actors, cinematographers, editors, composers, or any of the hundreds of artists that bring you these feats of art? I am Louis Lacau, your host, into the world of films, your guide to Man Bites Retro. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Man Bites Retro. And this week, we have an amazing, amazing movie to bring up, but also an amazing guest that is bringing this really awesome short film that, yes, it's a short film, but it actually counts as a film because the subject matter is so important. And I couldn't find a quote, so I asked him to to find this particular quote. And go ahead. What's the quote? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> and I think that's kind of like the perfect summary of yep. this film. Just about encapsulates it. Oh, perfectly, perfectly. So that voice that you are hearing is Zach Walsh, which he's been on so many episodes of Retro and hopefully so many more. Yay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So, uh, Zach, where can everybody find you? Where, what are you working on recently and all that stuff? Oh, man. Okay, so I, am, uh, I do have Twitter, uh, at ZachTweetsNow. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, currently uh, I'm in D.C. Uh, working on various projects. Right now I'm uh, currently starring as Charlie Brown in Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, at uh, Gateway <laughs> in Loudoun, Virginia. And then shortly after that, I'll uh, be in the Rocky Horror Show uh, in uh, Maryland uh, with the Wolfpack Theater Company. Uh, they are also brilliant. Um, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be insane. busy times, back-to-back yeah. shows. going to be a lot of fun. Very, very different. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome, man. And so anybody that doesn't know where that quote is from, it is actually from World of Tomorrow. This is a 2015 short animated sci-fi just bundle of amazingness. Oh. It's it, it's something that it's very hard to kind of summarize this story. So I think the best way to tackle this particular story and this particular short film is the emotions that you go through when you watch it. What yes. does it make you feel? What what actually like what goes through your mind when you're watching this film because it's quite a journey. Yeah, it's so my thing it's because it's it's um I mean if short films count which they do. Oh, uh, hell it's yeah. my favorite it's my favorite film. Um, and when I'm telling people about it, I always struggle because I'm like, I'm going to sound like a crazy person for a minute because <laughs> um, it's it's this really silly stick figure animation thing that's about like crushing existential angst. What do you think? And they're like, that, are you okay? It's like, no. Um, <laughs> but like, it's, it's such um, like optimistic pessimism. It's it's such um, like it, it's a very like beautiful and honest reflection on like loss and like just it general is. fears and anxieties that we all have um, in being alive and like coming of age and just but it's all told through well it's it's told through two lenses uh, one of a little girl. Uh, absent-mindedly playing uh, and giggling, <laughs> and then through uh, the very cold and calculated voice of a clone of her from the future. So it's it, it is a jumble of tone and feeling, and it's just it's so correct. <laughs> it really is. It, it's it's kind of one of these things that the the director did and the writer which is the same person um he did a very specific job mm-hmm. he made it very simple 
That way, people weren't concentrating on the images. They were concentrating on the story and the words that were being said. Mm-hmm. But not allowing your focus to go on cinematography or animation style or how beautiful it is, which the second time you watch this film, you realize how subtly beautiful it is. Oh, the, the backgrounds. And yes. Even just the use of um, like stick figures on blank space. Yes. Like yes. it's, like it, it, it's very visually beautiful, but um, in but a, it's in very, a very subtle. Yeah, very uh, bare bones, utilitarian kind of way. It really is, but it he does it on on purpose, mm-hmm. and he does it in a way that makes you it drops your guard, and it makes you think that it's this silly little journey of this uh, time traveler, and trying to to kind of. Uh, give guidance to to the little child, the great 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 granddaughter, uh, what do you call it, a uh, clone of her, you know, and it, it's it's pretty incredible how this film kind of gives you the the feeling of look, don't dismiss a child mm-hmm. because look at what this child did for this person. So what's fascinating about it? Um, do you know of uh, how it was? Look how it came to be. The no, no, it. please tell me. So he, uh, and I, I forget her name, but he was uh, John Hertzfeld, the guy who created it, um, recorded his young niece playing Don't around me. with crayons with him when she was like four or five or so. Uh, and he just recorded all of the audio of her playing with him a couple days in a row and then took all of these incredible non sequiturs that she was saying and crafted this sci-fi story all around it. And so it, it really, it, it all originated from a toddler. <laughs> like it, it, it literally came straight from her. Um, wow. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. And this, it's only a 15 minute film, but it feels like so much more. It feels like this, long journey that you go through and not long tedious journey it doesn't feel like it's overextended or anything like that it's just it's just right yeah just right but the the roller coaster of emotions that these stick figures make you go through is incredible and the the voice actor it it plays a lot in part obviously to the voice actor and the amazing sound clips she is hysterical Yes, yes, she is. Uh, the woman playing, Pram. yeah, uh, Emily. Not uh, Emily Pram is little girl. So is she is she just credited as Emily? Uh, I don't know what she's what her name is credited as, yeah. but the actress's name is Julia Pot, and then the the niece is Winona May. What, yeah, but, but yeah, I love how how their interactions and also how it kind of challenges the social norms of relationships and what relationships could be. Oh, yes. Because that, the whole thing, that whole uh, happenstance where the clone falls in love with a rock and then (laughs) falls in love with, with these aliens and all that stuff. And it's so fascinating because if you actually start going into the analyticals of it and mm-hmm. analyzing what is being represented by these things, it's a whole relationship and it's an adult relationship that people have on a constant basis. Yeah. And, you fall in love with a rock. What does and, that mean? And it's like reflecting pretty much from all sides, the, the fears that are associated with that. Like when she then falls in love with the, one uh, monster on the moon yeah, and then she goes away and you just see him just get crushed and it's like and he remained inconsolable and then they never talk about him for the rest of it and it's like yeah because they just they hurt and then moved on like it's just oh yes true ah like yeah that, that's they, such a complex thing to communicate and that they do it yes through stick figure animation in 16 yeah. minutes it's <laughs> it tells more story than most uh, films do in two hours yeah and it tells it in 15 minutes and it develops it in a way that it's not pushed it's not 
it's not struggling through in any way or form. There's every scene has a purpose. Every scene is portraying the characters in the right light and it's developing the characters. And the fact that he edited his niece's footage of playing or audio of playing that just, that's, that's mind bottling. How that, he that. it takes a, like a special kind of crazy person mind <laughs> to listen to a child babbling and be like, so clones from the future at the end of the world. Like, I just, <laughs> what, how, how, how did your mind put this thing together? That's amazing. Right. Uh, and I mean, this, it, it's incredible what he did with it. And honestly, like this is a film that everybody needs to watch. This is especially anybody that struggles with any, any type of anxiety or social oh anxiety oh, yes. in any way or form this is it's I, incredibly uplifting i think so i found this it used to be on netflix uh, for the longest time before there was a um feud of sort i suppose with uh don herthfeld and distributors uh, he now independently uh distributes all his stuff in fact world of tomorrow 2 was put out uh, just straight from him like you could just like rent it from him which yeah. is cool but um uh, prior to that, when it was on Netflix, I watched it at like four in the morning when I was in an especially low place. It's no secret to the show that I uh, suffer with a lot of mental health issues and stuff like that. And um, it was a, a particularly dark, depressive time for me. And I had heard a couple things about this, like a couple of friends be like, oh, yeah, I watched that. It was weird, whatever. And it was just like, oh, OK, sure. And I, I checked it out. And it was revelatory. It was so impactful. I I watched this and I was like, oh my God, someone put it into words. <laughs> like, th- this is entirely what it feels like. Thank you. Um, and I was, I found myself like equal parts laughing and crying at this yeah. cartoon. Like, I, I, I was utterly floored and literally i I remember watching it three more times like as soon as it was over it's just like i i can't accept that that was real i need this again and watch it more (laughs) just i was just amazed by how articulate it is of those feelings of anxiety or depression or fear or loss or or wanting or whatever Um, like even down to like how it deals with mortality like Yep. It, the whole premise is everybody fighting <laughs> the idea of mortality. Uh, she comes back from the, the future near the end of the world and it tells her about how she's a like fifth generation clone because everybody grows old and then clones themselves so they can live forever, but now the world's going to end. So what do we do next? And we see like all of these like really just dark, messed up things that people are doing and like one of them is like putting your soul into a box so that your consciousness continues. <laughs> and then the when memo, you speak, the all, memo, the it comes back. <laughs> all, all the messages from the box are just, Oh God, no. And so it's like, <laughs> like, like that's such, that's such a funny and dark way of putting it. But it's like, it really you, know, it's like you, you're so afraid you don't want it. You don't want it. But then it's like, but if you're handed immortality, that would also be terrifying. This is like a very <laughs> double-edged sword. And therefore is like an irrational fear that we all struggle with, but it's something that we all struggle with. And like, that's communicated in a joke, in animation, in a couple seconds. And that's so, I can't fathom that. Like that's genius. It's just, that's beautiful. That's perfect. It really is. It's incredible what it does. And I, like you said, there's moments where you're laughing out loud. Like yes. I, my, my roommates must have thought I was insane because I was <laughs> hysterical laughing in some parts in the middle of the night. And, and then just completely like tear up in other parts. And you're yes. like, dude, this is, this is a little girl that had no idea that she was even being recorded. <laughs> And I'm feeling the emotion of that story being told. And that, that's just fascinating, man. Here I am identifying with a alien monster that speaks unintelligible <laughs> babbling. Here I am. Like, like, well, that's, that's incredible. That's
Hey you lovely nerds! This is Joe coming to you from Diversely Geek. Diversely Geek is a global nonprofit that promotes self-acceptance by highlighting the positive messages of fandom. We're all fans of something that has affected us for the better. We like to express that love by embracing our inner geeks with you all on our podcast, Diversely Geek Discusses. We also have a podcast for any Whovians out there called Doctor Who and Review. We often partner with Man Bites Media, so you're bound to come across us sooner or later. You can find us on all podcast platforms as Diversely Geek Discusses, and on all social media platforms as Diversely Geek. You can also subscribe on our website, diverselygeek.org. Live long and may the force be with you. Hello, movie nerds. This is Louis Lacau. This is William Phoenix. And I'm your host, Brandon Laco. Do you search for hours on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, and Shudder? Always looking for the next show to binge or movie to watch? Before you binge, take a bite with Man Bites Film. And then just the beautiful backdrops, the backdrops that yes. that are playing out. It feels like this Art Deco ish style, yes. yeah. And it's just incredible because it makes it feel like like this kind of work of art. And each celluloid is something that could be put on a frame and put up on your wall. And you just be yes. like, "Oh my god, I remember this." I remember this moment in the short film and it, it represents this and this and that. And just like it embodies what film should be a symbolism uh, yeah. of what our inner consciousness is yet also very entertaining. And even if you don't look at the deeper message, it's something that you could really enjoy. Oh watching. yeah. Even, even if you're like a perfectly well-adjusted person or whatever, and you're not going through anything, like you can still watch this and just be like, Oh, that was really great. Like that was really fun. That th- this was really inventive and clever. And like, but if you're open to uh, like re- reflecting on it or, or um, uh, letting it in in that sort of a way, it's it's definitely it's it's definitely multifaceted uh, and able to be interpreted in a lot of different ways. Like you can pretty much get different stuff out of it. It's very it's very personal. It is. And it's something that every single person is going to capture different aspects. Yeah. Like you, you identified with the, with the alien, which is very, it's very indicative of what each of us are going, what's each of mm-hmm. us are going through at the time. And uh, like my first thought was the rock. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know why that was, I just loved the aliens that aimlessly walked <laughs> the moon and were never shut down because they couldn't. <laughs> they said this depressed poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because it, first of all, it feels very uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. Yes. But that, like a modern a very, rendition of it. It's a very similar sensibility to that. This has a lot of like Douglas Adams to it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And it's also, it's um, uh, openly the creators of both uh, Bojack Horseman and Rick and Morty talk about how uh, John Hurt's books are particularly World of Tomorrow were big influences on them. So if you are listening and are into either of those shows, then this is also very good and up your alley. Definitely, definitely. And it, it's... I I really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that, that you brought this particular film to, oh, to yes. the podcast because it's something that not many people really think of short film let's go watch a short film you know whatever but mm-hmm. this is something well worth it and he actually self-distributes like zach said and it's actually available through vimeo yep and also he has it on another site that i can't remember what it was called but i'll pull it up real quick it's a uh, uh, dovga it's d-o-v-g-a mm-hmm. and that one's actually a free clip of it. It's a full 17 minutes for free. So if you want to keep a high re- a resolution version of it, then go to Vimeo. But if you want to watch it and check it out and, you know, kind of wet your feet on it, mm-hmm. 
check it out through 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 that other site. But definitely, he's got he's got a bunch of um, bits from it as well on his YouTube channel, I believe. So yes, yeah. yes. and but, the sequel, which is also a trip. Yes, <laughs> I, I haven't watched that one yet, but I will oh. be watching that. Um, that it's definitely worth it, and it's one of those things that when an artist actually separates himself from a company, mm-hmm. it's well worth giving those four dollars for for rental or six dollars to buy because that's going straight to him and that's worth it just on itself so i i definitely purchased it last night because i was like yes this is happening and Mm. i'm keeping this on my vimeo yeah i I need this yeah i need more of this in my life (laughs) and the fact that it was on netflix for such short amount of time sucks but I mean, this is a hundred percent on Rotten Tomato. It's eight point one on IMDb. It was up I mean, for the Oscar. Yeah, yeah, it, it was nominated for an Oscar, and this is yes. his second time as an Oscar nominee for short films. Yes, it's yeah, because part- um, rejected cartoons, I think, was was yes. up. Yeah, which that one's awesome. I just I love Don Hart's film, but this is hands down World Tomorrow is his masterpiece. Yeah, I definitely will be watching more and more of his stuff. And definitely keeping an eye out for anything else that he does because that's pretty awesome stuff. I, um, yeah, I'm. Yeah. Cannot wait. Right. Uh, so Zach, I don't know if you had any other words that you wanted to talk about the film. Um, just the um, like my last uh real like cling to it that I have is um, when going through uh treatment and everything subsequently, uh, I. Uh, there were a, a couple of things that, like, I held on to or, like, sayings or things that I read or something that kind of helped me get through the whole process of, of seeking help. And one of them was the quote from World of Tomorrow uh, uh, after, uh, I believe it's after the scene where she falls in love with the rock, where she explains, uh, I'm quite proud of my sadness because it means that I'm more alive. Oh, yes. To a person going through... A, a spiraling period of depression or something like that being reminded like you are alive and living now is like yeah, yes okay yes i can all right i'm all right okay cool i can do this um so just like it it's it's just it's in a very uh personal place in my heart this film like it, it is yeah because that to this day is it's something that i hold on to that's that's back there with like you know like buddhist chants and like the things they did like the prayer for acceptance or whatever like it's it's yeah. quote from this silly stick figure movie is like right in that same part of my mind um, yeah so no, no. This, is like, this is a truly beautiful film yeah it really is I, I think the quote that stands out to me and I finally found it and I'm so happy I did um, do not lose time on daily trivialities do not dwell on petty detail for all these things melt away and drift apart within the obscure traffic of time. Live well and live broadly. You are alive and living now. Now, now is the envy of all the dead. Yep. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. That, that, yeah. <laughs> that's just, that's incredible. I mean, that's that, that, so, that's so perfect. That's it's so, poetic. It's yes. beautiful. It, it's something that that will stick with you forever, and it truly deserves a place up there, in on this podcast first of all, and on so many other people's radar. Um, so if you haven't, please go out watch this film because it will impact you in ways that you never thought of a short film, mm-hmm. much less an animated stick figure <laughs> short film will do to you. It, it will make you laugh. It will make you cry. I, I give this film a 10 out of 10. That coveted 10 out of 10. Oh, hands down. And I, I obviously you agree with me on that one, Zach. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, the, and there's only a few films that get 10 out of 10. And that, that's that's very coveted position. No, but this one, this is well-deserving. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much, uh, Zach, for joining us this week on on this episode of Man Bites Retro. Um, this, again, is World of Tomorrow. If you haven't seen it, check it out on Vimeo or on that other random site if you don't want to pay. But Vimeo, go to Vimeo, pay. Give this man money to make another film because he deserves it. 
Um, so Zach, again, where can everybody check out any content that you're bringing out and all that stuff? I am Zach Walsh, Z-A-C-K-W-A-L-S-H. Check me out. I have a uh, Twitter, uh, which is Zach is tweeting now. Uh, not Zach tweets now, my mistake. Zach is tweeting now. And uh, I, uh, again, uh, currently uh, uh, Gateway Theater in Loudoun, uh, Charlie Brown. And then in October with uh, Wolfpack Theater Company off in Maryland uh, as Brad and the Rocky Heart Show. Sweet. Yes. So if you're in that area, definitely go check out Zach. Yeah. He he is as hilarious as he is on this podcast in person. Thank and, you. <laughs> and he does a great job on his show. So definitely go check him out because it's definitely worth your time. Um, so again, we'll see you guys or you'll hear us next week for another episode of Man Bites Retro. Bye, everybody. As the songs of awakening rang through, the world was created. The silence was broken. Middle-earth, with its rolling hills, broken mountains, flowing rivers, and beautiful forest, was created. Cellar Door is a journey into the mythology, the mystery, and the beauty of Middle-earth. Sit back. Close your eyes and imagine. When we were kids, we all had our go-to happy place, our escape. We gravitated to art, movies, bands, musical, or books. Something that did not make us feel alone, but empowered us in a world of love, magic, and adventures. Come with me as we explore the Wizarding World with William Phoenix.